Okay, so we are going to start working on the color wheel now. First of all, I recommend that you write down all of the names of each of the colors prior. This is also on a PowerPoint if you need to see where each color goes. We're going to start with our primary colors, which are red, yellow, and blue. And I'm gonna start first with yellow. Yellow typically is on the top of the color wheel, like 12 o'clock, and then violet is at the bottom because it's the darkest color. Okay, so on the very outside hue is going to just be the original color. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my paint. I already have my primary colors and my black and white. You don't need a, much, don't need a lot in this. And also too, I recommend using a flat brush for this or an angled brush, because it's really gonna help get the corners. If you're hesitant and you think you might paint over the corners, then I recommend using tape and just tape the edges so then you have more of a cleaner guide. Also, I would not water this down just because watered down can kind of make a watercolor look and also it can allow it to create more of a transparent color rather than a pure hue. Okay, so first of all, working with yellow. Yellow is probably, again, the most challenging color because it is so translucent. And if you want it to be a brighter or more thicker in application, all you need to do is continue to layer and wait for it to dry. And I turn my paper just to make sure I get all the corners and edges in. Okay, so here's my yellow. Now I, I bled on the sides a little bit more, that's okay, because when I add the yellow orange, I can just cover that up too. So um, just be aware if you do work over the edges, a lot of it can be covered by the other color. You just wanna have a clean presentation, so make sure that it is fully covered, and that is yellow. Now I recommend doing the entire pie slice before you move on to the next, since we already have the paint out. The next one is going to be a tint. A tint is added white. White is being added. So this is like a pastel look. So I'm only grabbing a little bit of paint right now and I don't need to mix a lot, right? Because we have a really small area. This is a fun part because you can add a lot of white if you want to for really strong transparency or I should say pastel-like or just a little bit. You just definitely want it to make it look different than the original hue. I'm using a foam plate that's white. It help, it's helpful because it's on a white sheet of paper, so it helps me to kind of see the color ahead of time. Okay, then I'm gonna go ahead and add the value or the color tone. And again, I want it to at least look like a different color value than the original hue. Also, whatever you decide to make this, how light or how dark, how much white you're gonna have in it, that's gonna set the tone for the entire ring because you want it to be very consistent. So when we step back, we want to be able to see the individual rings um, with the similar amount of those values in there. Okay, now we're going to add gray into this. So this is now the tone. So I already have my white mix. I'm gonna add just a little bit of black. If you notice, I'm barely getting just a little dot almost because black is so powerful. So again, white was already mixed, so that created my gray with the black. The main thing is you don't wanna lose the color. So for some reason this looked too grayed out, that means I lost the color that became too dull. So I'm going to look and I see it looks slightly different. I feel like I could add a little bit more black I'm gonna first dab it on to here so it's not too dramatic again. And I'm just mixing my black. Again, I barely have any. I'm not using much paint at all. Okay, and then I see that looks like a difference. Again, for me, I turn my paper just so I can get those clean edges. And again, it really helps with having a flat brush. No water added. Okay, so we can see definitely a difference between these. So hue, tint, tone, and now last is the shade. For the shade, I'm gonna go ahead and clean my brush because we're only adding black into it. So I'm cleaning my brush. When you clean your brush, it's good that you rub it around the bottom 
Um, I recommend not to ever just leave it in here because it can start bending the bristles. So to clean it out and then have some tissue or whatever you might have around just to clean it out. And then now I'm gonna add black. So I'm using my original color again of yellow. And now this is the part I have to be so careful again on because black is gonna really become very dominant compared to the yellow. Again, this one is probably the most challenging color to work with. The rest will be a little bit more easier. We just don't wanna lose the color where we have too much black. Because this is acrylic, again, it dries fast, but the good thing is if I apply it onto my paper, I can go ahead and see, oh, you know, I could add more, no, that's good. And I'm gonna say it's a little bit too light still, so we're gonna add a little more black. It's better to be careful than to do too much black where you lose again the color. No white is added, so again, this is just pure black and pure yellow. Okay, that's a little different in tone now, looks stronger. As you can tell, not much color is needed at all as we mix, because this is a really small little pie slice at the end. Okay, so now I have my hue, tints, tones, and shades. I'm gonna go ahead and do the red and the blue, and then we will play this again when I start with the secondary colors. Okay, thank you.